All right, the Chargers spent a lot of time acquiring talent in the wide receiver room through the NFL draft, drafting not one, not two, but three wide receivers, all of which I think have a chance to see the field this year, um, even though two of them were picked up in the seventh round, which, by the way, hit rates on wide receivers in the seventh round, not good. Not good. But that's not what this video is about, okay? That's not what we're going to talk about. We are going to talk about the Chargers adding depth, but also a veteran presence to the mix and a guy that I know really well because he's a former Detroit Lion. And speaking of former Detroit Lion, hey, we're Lions fans, but we love U of M too, and we love Harbaugh, so we followed him over to the West Coast. Man, this has been fun talking Chargers football with all of you. We hope to give you a non-biased opinion on what your team is doing, and you're doing a lot of good things. I think we all know kind of this offseason with the Chargers Harbaugh comes in, Roman comes in as OC, you get a new DC coming, you get a bunch of Michigan flair and stuff like that, you get Hartiz coming in as your new GM, and you're like, all right, what are they going to do? And then they didn't do anything. Like, it was really boring, and because they're, that's what good GMs do. They don't go out and spend money they don't have. They don't go out and do things before they should, and now when you see their draft, all of a sudden you see like, oh, yeah. This is a team that's going to build through the draft, and then they're going to fill in holes via free agency. That's exactly what they're doing right here by adding DJ Chark. All right, and DJ Chark is a very interesting wide receiver. He was drafted and played for a little while with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and then injuries really started hampering him the last two to three years of his career. Now, when he's on the field, he is absolutely an effective wide receiver. Um, he is a good uh, player that will run. I mean, early on in Jacksonville, ran multiple routes, but the thing he does best, stretch the field. All right, that is who he is. So let's first look at some numbers. Let's look at his athletic profile, and then we'll go back and talk about what he'll be, what this article says he'll be to the Chargers, and what I think he will be to the Chargers. So the first thing we want to look at is I want to remind everyone he was drafted back in 2018. Not that long ago. All right. He's still not old. All right. He's not old. So just relax. And he had a 9.94 uh, RAS, RAS, relative athletic score. In other words, he's one of the most athletic wide receivers based on size, weight, and skill to ever test. He is. That's what he is. So he was a sub 4-4 guy. All right, not even close. 4-3-4 back in 2018 was just insane. He doesn't look like a 4-3-4 guy. Part of that's because he's almost 6-3 and he's 200 pounds, and he probably doesn't run a 4-3-4 anymore. He probably runs a 4-5-4 or 4-4-5 is probably what he runs now. But if you can get him healthy, get him in that nice weather in L.A., like get the body feeling good again, hey, maybe he does become a sub-4-4 guy again. But either way, he has more than enough speed to stretch the defense. That is what he is best at. And then when you look at him, um, when you look at him over the course of his career, you look at a guy that has consistently put up decent numbers, um, but also he's been a deep threat guy. So when, like I said, when he was in Jacksonville, his first three years were a little unique. So his rookie year, not much. And then all of a sudden his second year went nuts. Had 114 targets, had 73 catches. What a horrible quarterback. I think it was Blake Bortles, right? And um, went over 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. Um, couldn't quite replicate that the next year, but still had a good season. And then got hurt. He got hurt in 2021. Then he goes over to Detroit, and Detroit basically just uses him as a deep threat. Like, that's what, that's what he is. And by the way, Jared Goff is quarterback, great quarterback, uh, not one of those guys that's just like, oh, I'm just going to chuck it deep. All right. Jared Goff likes to throw to receivers that get separation. DJ Chark is not this great gip separation guy, but he will go and make plays and make contested catches. We know that Herbert has absolutely no problem throwing to players who uh, need to make contested catches. Remember, he played with Mike Williams for many years. All right. So, and Mike Williams was not separating a ton on the outside. So DJ Chark comes in here, kind of a poor man's Mike Williams, if I can be completely honest, and that is what he's going to be at a much cheaper salary, and he's going to be coming in much healthier. He's coming off back-to-back 500-yard -back seasons, all right? He didn't, I mean, like, he was the best receiver on a bad receiving core in Carolina last year. That's what he was. 
That's that's who he is. All right. And so I think when you put him in a lineup like this, when you talk about Quentin Johnson, when you talk about Josh Palmer, when you talk about the three rookies, right? McConkey, Rice, Johnston, right? Cornelius Johnson. I think I said Johnston. I don't know why. But anyways, when you talk about those guys, you put Chark in here. He brings a level of experience which is great. That room needs experience and you can run him out there each week. And in this article, it's saying he's going to be the number four wide receiver. Totally understand that, but he's not, he's going to be your guy who lines up on the outside as your one or two. And I'm not saying he's going to be the most targeted receiver. He won't. He's almost never the most. I think only one time in his career was he the most targeted receiver on a team. He's going to be probably your third most targeted or fourth most targeted player, but he's not going to play the role of wide receiver four where he's only on the field for 20% of snaps or 15% of snaps. All right? I don't think that's what he is. But you're giving him for $5 million, and he's a guy who's still just 27 years old. He still has the ability to show that he can do more. Here's my question. More than anything else, all right, what does this say about the trust that they have in Quentin Johnston? Like, that's kind of where my thought process went to this. Like, this is the role he's supposed to be able to play. And they went out there, they got McConkey, right? And all of a sudden you start realizing, like, okay, they want another outside receiver. I think they think Quentin Johnson's not going to be ready. Brendan Rice is not going to be ready. And Cornelius Johnson might not be ready. So they need to have a guy that this year can come in and produce. Because here's the thing about the Chargers. We talked about this a month ago before the draft. I think they're in much better position now. But this is a front office that clearly wasn't trying to win the Super Bowl this year. They're trying to win the Super Bowl next year and the year after that and the year after that. Now, does that mean you can't be a good team and a playoff team and who knows what could happen in the playoffs? No, I think they absolutely expect to be a good team. I think you expect to be the second best team in the West. I think you expect to make the playoffs, if I can be completely honest with you. I think there's hope for that, all right, with an improved defense, but there are holes here. This looks like a 9-8 and eight team, so... These are the type of players that can come in, and it helps your younger guys develop. They get to watch what he does. DJ Chark is a good guy. Like, he's a good locker room presence. He's not one of the guys who's going to sit here and complain and all that kind of stuff. He's a good person, and we even talked about this in a video about how this is a guy they should bring in. Like, it just makes sense. So, hopefully you like the new ad for your team. And uh, I, I understand it's not like the biggest splash, but anytime you can get a guy that's tall, that can extend the fielding, make contesting catches, you're doing okay. All right, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.